time since 1973 on grand final day, the colours maroon and gold. The colours of the mighty fighting lions. this afternoon, a lady who's represented Western Australia magnificently, both interstate and internationally. Would you welcome her to Subiaco Oval this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Love. <laughs> You'll notice she's wearing a very cleverly designed outfit this afternoon, which shows absolutely no bias. A pretty form we couldn't wish to see. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, put your hands together. Welcome to Subiaco Oval, Jackie Love. Thank you. Hello! And a special hi to everyone watching at home and all the country viewers. It's so exciting to be home for the grand final, particularly since it's the centennial. And uh, I'd just like to wish East Fremantle and Subiaco all the very best. Centenary dancers, the city of Perth, the Perth ladies and the Perth Highland Pipe bands, our marching girls, the Glen Robbins seniors, the Scott Grenadiers seniors and juniors, the Whitford Guard seniors, the Westerners juniors, our brass bands, the Canning City brass band, the Southern Districts brass bands, and our Baton Twillers, the Cascades and Musgraves. Young players, Phil O'Reilly, Dave Johnson for this match here this afternoon. Toss the coin. We'll 
and by the captains to come across for the toss. Welcome to Subiaco Football Club, their captain, Neil Taylor. And the coach, captain coach of the East Tremantle Football Club, Ron Alexander. Alexander will take the call. Gerald Green will come forward with the coin. It's 1985, East Fremantle versus Subiaco. For the following people, please go to the league office. Thank you, Jack Hawkins, Alex Torres, and Morris McGuire. The following people to the league office, they would please. Jack Hawkins, Alex Torres, and Morris McGuire. Two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Next voice you hear will be that of Robert Miller. Great day here at uh, Subiaco Oval for the grand final. Great spectacle. Peter Phillips coming up. Clinton Brown to play for uh, Subiaco. We can't find who they've left out at the moment. And Bevan Warner's coming off. And is that Leishman with him? Looks like it. You know, no, Sparks. Clinton Roberts. Clinton Roberts, yeah. Clinton Leishman's Roberts. not there then. Is he? God knows. Who's Bob? that? Bob, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, can John, you hear me? Yes, yep. I can perfectly. Speak again, Bob. Two, four, six, yeah, eight, ten. Fine. Okay. Leishman, is it? <coughs> Siren to start the final. Main almost. wearing on the wing. Yeah. to start the 1985 Grand Final, Centenary Grand Final in Western Australia between Subiaco and East Fremantle. Harding and Scott, Scott with an almighty thump. Alexander won the toss and kicked into the breeze. Spencer on the ground. This is Nisham for East Fremantle. Nisham to half forward. Wilson over the top, marks over Sparks. Wilson can go on. The lead on. Browning, Crutchfield can't mark. Browning tries to tap it on. Out of defence they come. A hand pass from Clinton Brown. Good to see him in the Subiaco team. Up towards Taylor. He knocks it on. Going back for it is Christie for East Fremantle. A chance for Dean. He's caught. Still holding him. Nisham receives the ball. East Fremantle out of trouble. Nisham sends it up towards a half foot. Taken by Rankin. Chance for the blue and whites. Goes up towards full forward. From the back. Oh, not paid. Nearly a good mark. Alexander gets it up. There's the first score of the match. It's full point from the captain coach for the blue and whites. Well, that was an important goal for East Fremantle, Ron Alexander. And you couldn't think of, I guess, a more fitting man to have kicked it for them, their captain coach. Have a look at it again. Ball coming into the forward line from Rankin. Almost the mark to Browning there. Alexander quick to seize on it. Pete got out of the road for his captain and one goal to East Fremantle. Browning playing at full forward. It looks like Waterson, that fullback. Picking up Keane as we thought he might at some stage during the finals. Has had the call over Laurie Keane in previous encounters. The breeze going to left towards the Perth end of the ground. Yes, Laurie Keane and his marksman Colin Watterson. Be interesting to see how things pan out there. 
Again, it'll be Scott and Harding in the centre. East from Antle, a goal. Line ball. Neil Taylor can't get it out. Featherby off the ground, but he's actually lost meterage as it goes out towards East from Antle's wing. Rankin closing with it. With him is Lamb. That's Phil Lamb. Ball still in play. Dwayne Lamb a long searching hand pass to Neil Taylor. A quick kick from Taylor is marked by Dean. Ball played on. Oh, he, gee, I thought he was going back for the kick, or it must have been touched. I guess they couldn't hear the call to play on in that crowd as Foreman clears towards left half forward. Bumped away in defence by Wilkinson. Opportunity for them. Here comes Taylor. That's Brian Taylor, number four. Kicks into the centre. Spencer, Keane. Well played by Keane. Charge for Subiaco as the hand pass uh, came out that time from O'Loughlin. Long kick into the forward line. Going back with it, Sells. Gavin Waite with him. And Subiaco have got their first score behind. Well, Sells needed a little bit of acceleration at last uh, metre. He couldn't get it. And uh, Waite coming in. Well, the goal. Watterson to himself and away he goes. Versatile player, can play at full back or full forward. Out to Nisha, he started off well again. That's his third kick in as many minutes. Half back flank, out of sight as the general. Oh, he's not a good kick. <laughs> he put him out of play. That's unusual for Jared Nisha. Most. Kicking to come there from the outer side. There he is. The player that put it out. He won't let that worry him at all, Bob. Wilkinson, it looks like Leishman is a player out of the 21 for Subiaco. Underneath the scoreboard, out of sight, a good kick. They've got the breeze at their back. It's on the half forward flank. Oh, boots going in there. Mort's there. So is Mainwaring. Looks as though he's playing on the wing at the moment. And a bounce down about 45 metres out from the Lions goal. East from Adler, a goal. Subiaco behind at the three and a half minute mark. Keen over the top. It was meant for Sells, but it's too far for him. Bryce Foreman. Hand pass out to Stephen Green, number 14. Green and Turner's given it over to Waterson. Plenty of time, the big fella, to run to the 50-metre line. Kick the right wing, peak in front. Strong hands on the ball, peak, but couldn't hold the mark. Mario Turco battling with Featherby. Breaks away from the Subiaco sentiment as Turco. Left puts the ball to the 50-metre line. Crutchfield picked it up, then lost it. Bumped off it by Wilson, or Browning it was, holding the man the decision. And Browning to take the kick from 55 metres out. And it's Maxfield, which is how he's going right through. Hesitated momentarily and lost it. It's about as much as there you can see the incident coming up. And Browning being held too high by Crutchfield. So Clinton Browning from 55 metres out, a chance for East from Adel's second. It's a high kick. It's going to have distance and accuracy. No, it hasn't. One behind, East from out of 1-1, Subiaco a point. Four minute mark coming up, and that shows how the ball can be kicked against the breeze in the lure of these big stands here at Subiaco. Over. Michael Crutchfield, the fullback for Subiaco, will go to the outer side. That's the offensive side. That's not a good kick. Doesn't get a great deal of distance. Phil Lamb. He gets it down towards the centre wing. Close to the line out there, and the ball's gone out of play. Out on the full. Gavin Wake to bring the ball into play. Subiaco with the breeze at the moment. Kick into half forward. Shovel out by Drain Lamb. Scott's there too. Renstead. And once more the ball is out of play. Far side of the ground under the scoreboard which shows that East Fremantle lead seven points to Subiaco's one. It'll be Scott and Harding. Two great ruckmen for their respective sides. Harding brought the ball down. This is Main wearing slips. Got rid of it, Harding pushes it on. Coming through is Dwayne Lamb, a long hand pass, a good one to Neil Taylor. Subiaco getting something going as Taylor pops it up high, running back with it, Sells. Wake did well, but Sells suffered it off the ground. For a goal to Subiaco. There's the opportunity, Stephen Sells always working around the goal square. Just got his foot to the ball, Wake made a valiant attempt there. There it is, Neil Taylor forced onto his left foot. Sells running back, he's got meterage on his opponent, but Wake stuck to him. But Sells, presence of mind, got his foot to the ball. 1-1 one, one apiece. At the six and a half minute mark of the first, looks like being a great grand final. Harding and Scott. Two old opponents there, Scott gets a cup and it goes to McNish. He boots at the half forward, the Lions are in attack. Chance for Keane. 
William Spencer and Stephen Green. Oh, Spencer picks it up. Stephen Green made a blue because he put it in the line. He should have put it out of play, and Spencer has picked a point. Well, bad luck for Peter Spencer there, and a bad mistake by Stephen Green. Spencer just unable to get that one through. He was on his wrong kicking foot, although on the correct side of the ground. So, Subi, a point Someone, in front. Something going on here, John. It's going back. Maybe it was out. Yes, the boundary umpire said it was out of play. So that's no score. Okay, so at the moment it shows that Subiaco 139 to East Fremantle a goal, but I don't think that's right. Now East Fremantle one goal 99. <laughs> that's not right either. Now nobody's anything. As the kick has been marked by Waterson. Waterson left foots the ball out of trouble. Main wearing behind McNish in front. McNish doing well on his wing so far. McNish. Puts the ball long and high. Keen, obviously, the target. He's got three to try and mark it against. Spencer, a snapshot at goal is offline. Hit the post, the behind post, so it'll be out on the full. He's great for putting his foot quickly the ball. Well, that score has uh, messed up the uh, Boy, has it ever. It's Hembridge scoreboard. The, scoreboard. the old score, but seven points to six in favour of East Fremantle at the moment. Now, Lachlan. Phil Lamb, it is. Phil Lamb. This day with a 50 metre mark and the vice captain playing in his first grand final after 181 games. Well, he's gone short to his skipper. Oh, that's not a good pass. Shocking pass from Phil Lamb. Should have gone long with a breeze and the ball once more out of play. Bit of inexperience, I think, then by Lamb uh, with the breeze, as Bob Miller said, he should have gone long. So it's 1 1 7 apiece and that's at the nine minute mark. Ruck knock in, the hand pass was meant for Taylor, it's gone astray, as through they come, East Fremantle clear the ball out past the left centre wing, going across the knotty, drop the mark, not going to get a lot of opportunity, Lockie has lost the boot, got the hand pass away, this is Scott, Scott now out to Lamb, Lamb a long kick into the forward line, Main wearing almost a one-hander, G. Suvia handling the ball a lot, this is Dean, Wilkinson, but he gave it to the wrong man. Pete now left puts the ball out of trouble. But only as far as Warren Dean, who's centre half forward and has taken that mark on right centre wing. Well, he's got the breeze behind him. He's a good kick. That's a 60 metre kick right down to half forward. Back to the pack of Stephen Green. Through once more. It's Waterson. He's doing well in that position. Stephen Green, half back flank. I know it's early, Bob, but I'd start getting keen on the ball to get him a run to get into the play. Waterson's beating him pointless at the moment. Renstead. George Christie come up from the back line and has put it over the line. Throwing in the half forward flank. George Christie right up from the back pocket followed his man. Scott. Lock is still without his boot. Solon. Featherby. Wild old kick from Featherby is out on the full. So the score's 1-1-7 one, one, apiece, and that's at the 10-minute uh, mark. Lockyer kicks that with his bootless right foot. A shocking old kick. Going to be OK, though. Zanotti in trouble. Hand pass from Sparks out to Scott. Scott straight to Christie. Long kick from George Christie into the forward line. Peak in front, being paid the mark. Oh, I think he's up. Zanotti touched that first. We'll have a look at that again. Here it comes, there's the kick. Well, do you reckon Pete got first hand of that? Don't know. But he has it, and that's all that matters. And Brian Pete will kick from 55 metres out. Zanotti on the mark. Peek's kick, it's a high one. Drifting off to the left a little bit. Alexander goes high, can't mark. Ball running free. Scott goes back for it out of the pocket. Scott a long kick out of defence. Mainwaring comes down and marks. Plays on quickly, puts the ball into the left full forward pocket. Wilson, Sparks, still in play. Zanotti will clear. And the runner takes it out of the fence, the last line to fence, but Subiaco got no leads. Brian Lamb a chance. Back it comes to the half forward line. Featherby, McNish goes over to our Lachlan, was good play. He goes towards half forward. Born in front and paid. Beautiful mark for Mort. Great mark, Michael Mort. Puts it down quickly towards full forward, but he's going to get a 15-metre penalty. Michael Mort playing on the half-forward flank. Front position, 
Ice on the ball and draw it down beautifully. Yeah, great hands. Good hands on the ball. He will kick from just outside the 50 metre line. We'll set it out to the right and bring it back with a breeze. Well, that's how he should kick it. Any score here would give Subiaco the lead. Michael Moore, his first grand final after a couple oh. of years out. He's done it well. Oh. Set it out, brought it back. A goal to the Lions. Well, you picked it in one, Bob. When you said that, he started off from the right and let the breeze bring it back, which he did to absolute perfection. There's a classic lesson for anybody learning the game. Look at that. Put it up high, let the wind do the work, and a magnificent kick to give Subiaco their second. They're 2-1-13, East from Mantle, one one seven at the 12 and a half minute mark, first quarter. As rain begins to fall once more. Unfortunately. Scott and Harding. Scott timed his leap the better to Featherby. Featherby towards right half forward. It's going to fall into the open space there. Sells runs on it, oh, traps it beautifully, now loses it and can't keep it in play. And I think Sells is going to get a kick now because Gavin Wake, Gavin Wake manhandled him after the ball had gone out of bounds. A silly play by Wake. Undisciplined stuff, that. Sells is on the right angle to score too. There's his kick, it's come back brilliantly. Oh, what a goal to Sells, that's his second mistake by Gavin Wake from East Fremantle. Well, Stephen Sells, as we said, the opportunist in the forward line, playing in his first grand final. There's the kick. Gavin Wake sticking very close. The ball is now going out of play. Now that's finished. The ball's out. Have a look at Wake. Goes right up to him and pushes him out of the way. I'm sure Coach Alexander wouldn't be pleased with that one. 3-1-19 to 1-1-7, and that's at the 13 and a half minute mark first quarter. Whether that board's right, John, I don't know whether that Subiaco point's been taken off or not. Anyhow... Yeah, it has, Bob. 14 minute mark coming up, and the big crowd are roaring. 45,000 plus people in a wet grand final. Comes to Harding. Dean's come right up to the centre square. Pushed in the back. Yes, it's an East Fremantle kick, and it goes to Foreman. Yeah, Foreman to take the ball just backward of centre as the rain absolutely cascades down. A big thunderstorm. Zanotti knocks it away from Lockyer. Peak puts it out in front of himself. Opportunity for Renstead and a diving mark taken by Wilkinson at centre half back. Wilkinson goes out towards right centre wing. Sells from behind. Knocked away by Harding. Wayne Lamb should be first to get there. It's kicked away from him. Scott tries to come through. Lamb holds his ground well. That's Phil Lamb. And if you're going to get in there first, you're going to get the kicks. Phil Lamb. Out to Phil Scott. Phil Scott's kick's not what he would have liked. Clean bowl Spencer running free. Waterson's lost the boot as well. This is Stephen Green now on the 50-metre line. And he's from Adel out of trouble. His kick up towards the point of the square. All players battling the chance for Turco. Comes to Rinstead. Wilson, the range pelting down now as Nisham's out there. Shades of the 78 grand final. And Nisham is going to take the kick. Kicking into the teeth of it, they are, the blue and whites. Nisham steadying play down, looking for a lead. Here comes a wet ball. And Philip Lamb, who's playing pretty well at the moment, takes that mark in the back line, and he is a right winger. They're doing well across the centre, Subiaco, Bob McNish and Lamb on top. And Lamb puts it out to, right out the far side, to Featherby, picked up by Neil Taylor. Neil Taylor left puts the ball high again, sells the target, and is he having a first quarter? He's kicked two goals and he's on right centre wing. The half forward, keen out in front of Waterson, that'll do his confidence good. a bomb from Laurie Keane, an absolute oh. bomb to pull forward. He was almost at the point of the square and it was just off line. Shows what the win can do. Here's the, here's the mark from Keane. Now have a look, there's the square and he's kicked it from almost there. 21, Harding with a burst of speed off left half back flank. Lamb in front. Keeps the ball in front of him as well as he gets away from Foreman. Again it's put high. Keane comes out, chance for more. Waterson to clear, and again East from Adel's defence called on to relieve. As Watt comes out to Christie, Christie playing well up the ground at the moment. All over goes Wilson. He going get a kick? Yes, he does. Must get a kick because Sparks was right in the middle of his back. Peter Wilson 
plays on. Oh, and he's grabbed too high, unfortunately. Threw it out in front of him, but Sparks made an error. Gee, uh... Peter Wilson, the centre half forward. And there's Brian Peake. Is he also playing without a boot? No, nope. he's taken the mark about 60 metres out. Brian Peake towards the Subiaco end. From the back, it's Alexander. That was a good leap. Clinton Brown over to Zanotti. Zanotti to Brown. Brown to Zanotti is good play as they relieve. Only as far as Mainwaring. He socks it back into the forward line. Picked up by Turco to Nisham. O'Loughlin goes in at Nisham's feet. Great pick up there from Lamb. He's held when not in possession and must get a kick. And a lot of kicks for Lamb in the first quarter. This will be six, Bob. Not bad. Six kicks in a less than a quarter of play. As Sells went up one-handed, didn't take it. Neil Taylor put weight down brilliantly and scrambled the ball on superbly to Dean. If they get something from this, it's going to be a brilliant play by Taylor that enabled them to do it as Stephen Green runs it to the boundary line. Well, Subiaco are putting the pressure on the moment. The 17, nearly the 18-minute mark. They've taken a little time to warm up. They're kicking with the breeze and they need goals. Throw in that right full forward pocket. Keane's coming in to do battle with Harding. Harding recovers. Is it a free kick? Yes. Sells and again. Stephen Sells. He has kicked two. He'll kick from 40 metres out. He's on his correct foot. Oh, the player brought over from uh, Victoria last year. Making a name for himself in the grand final with, not this time, one point. A goal there would have been handy to Subiaco. The breeze... Uh, it was a factor when the game started, but it certainly uh, died out a little bit at the moment. The rain seems to have gone away momentarily. That's Stephen Sells, number 14. This is Colin Waterson bringing the ball in for East from Apple. Waterson to left half back flank, harding the target, knocked away from him. And it's going to be thrown in, just oh. outside Subi's 50 metre line. Fortunately for the spectators, the sun is trying to shine through again. Yeah, if the sun could just come out a little bit, an ideal day for football as Scott gets the knock down. Spencer burrows in, O'Loughlin off the ground, Bryce Foreman battling, Dean emerges with the ball, hooks it high towards the forward line, Keen goes back, it's bouncing free, Waterson going to have to work extremely hard, which he does. Takes the cover off the ball, Warren Dean, he's a tremendous kick. So it's out of bounds in Subiaco's left full forward pocket. Keen in there, taking the hit out, battle going on down there with Wake. And the umpire will bounce it down and Glen O'Loughlin. It's only about 25 metres out from Subi's goal. We're coming up to the 20 minute mark of the first. Keen doing the ruck row. Gets it to Spencer under the left foot. And Peter Spencer has hit the great goal. By G. Subi uh, not taking any time to warm up in this game. You'll recall that in the second semi final and final, they gave their opponents three or four goals start before they started to get going. Well, what a brilliant knockdown that was from Keane. That was straight down Spencer's throat. And Spencer returned the compliment by putting through Subiaco's fourth. And Spencer will uh, put the ball straight through his boot as soon as he gets it. He kicked six last week. So now, at the 20 and a half minute mark, Subia 4-3-27, East from Adel 1-1-7. His tail is in the middle being held without the ball and will get the kick. Hey, they're looking good, Subi, in the first quarter. Long way to go, I know. Look, Keane's got three to beat. Gets nudged out. Through comes Lord. He can have a shot. I think he missed. Yo, yeah, no, he hasn't. The reaction from the crowd was such I thought he'd missed that. I don't think he could believe his good fortune. Well, there he is, the boy that's been out of football for two years, Michael Moore. He's kicked two. Sells has kicked two. There it is. Look, the defence opened up. He had an open run of the goals and no pressure at all. Two kicks, two goals. Well, you can't do better than that. And that's going to give these Subiaco forwards, particularly Morton Sells, a lot of confidence in the first quarter. Well, Five goals, three to one, one, 20 and one and a half minutes. And there's Ron Alexander coming up to uh, yep. try and do something. He's calling to the bench. He wants uh, somebody to come on. Looks Roger like Roger Kerr. Kerr. Yeah. A great opening by the Lions. What can the issue man do? Scott gets on there, but Harding gets the tap. Rankin tries to take it away. They're tackling. Well, there's Sells again. He's come up to the square to get a kick. Boots it down towards half-forward, Waterson. Waterson gets the ball out of trouble. 
The mark has been taken for East from Antle by number 16, Holt. Holt puts it into the forward line, but Zanotti takes the mark and a clip from Neesham to go with it. Oh, Zanotti throws caution to the wind. Hand pass to Brian Taylor, who right foot Subi out of trouble. Underneath it, Dean knocks it on. Mainwaring backs up from behind. He's trying to get his side motivated as he puts a ball into the forward line. Knocked down, a chance for O'Loughlin. He hits it into the open spaces. This is Taylor, Brian, a high kick. Getting underneath it for uh, East Fremantle. Solon. Solon. Solon, just backward of left centre wing, goes in short to Harding. Harding the hand pass. This is Rankin. Rankin fires it up towards uh, full forward. Socket away in defence by Brown. Race on here. 18 is McNish. Almost left it behind. Over the top of him went Christie and he'll get a kick. George Christie uh, is on the half forward flank at the moment. I don't know what he's doing up there, but he's going to get the kick. And the interstate baseballer and school teacher will take the kick. He's a good uh, 65 metres out from goal. Picks it up towards Paul Ford, looking for the tall timber. Browning's there, Wilson two, Nisham. Oh, he's surrounded by players, he's holding the ball by tackling well to see the Echo side. What a brilliant tackle that was to Ryan Taylor right onto him. Well, in a 15 metre penalty, they're making a lot of mistakes, the blue and whites. Very undisciplined stuff, that right. one of those has cost them a goal and that one cost them 15 metres. They're kicking well, the Subiaki to the right flank, and that's the way to do it. Rankin again. Towards full forward. Dumped away. Back it comes to Rankin. Nisham. He got no backup. Taken by O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin off the right half back flank. Kicks up towards the wing. Scott comes through to try and keep the ball away. Solon goes in. Now Brian Pete for East from Antle. A high kick into the forward line. Crutchfield in front. And if you're in front, you'll get the kicks, and that's what Michael Crutchfield has got. Now Lockett trying to get it over to his rovers, but he put his hand on the back. Crutchfield, last line of defence. A long, searching kick out of the back line. No mark, chance for oh. Peak. Lovely hand pass to Rankin from Brian Peak. Rankin, a long kick. Good mark taken by Browning. Yes, that was a good kick because Browning, he saw Browning coming out, and the player didn't let him down. Have a look at Rankin's kick. And he's a good leaper, Browning. And he needed to call on all of his ability then. And Clinton Browning a chance to arrest this slide because Subi lead 5-3 to 1-1. And we're 24 minutes into the first quarter. Browning from 50 metres out. Long kick from Clinton Browning. Looks OK. And boy, did East Fremantle need that. That's a pressure kick from Browning. To bring East Fremantle back into it and a little bit of confidence. 2-1 to 5-3. 25-minute mark coming up. There he is. The versatile centre half back, full back. They are playing at centre half forward. There's the mark again from Browning, and he really did well to get over the top of Sparks to take that because he wasn't in position. Back at the bounce. Alexander's come onto the ball. East Fremantle making an attempt through Wilson to half forward Kerr's on the ground McNish oh, puts the player under pressure with Sparks not a good hand pass and the bounce goal so East Fremantle starting to uh, just call a halt for things at the moment 2-1-13 to 5-3-33 we're into time on in the first quarter Scott gets a big thump a chance for O'Loughlin Neesham's with him, O'Loughlin was held got it across to Dwayne Lamb Lamb into the forward line bounces over Mort's head oh bad mistake that time by the uh, East Fremantle defence Waterson as cool as a cucumber spins around gets out of trouble and Brian Peak is available to take the mark on right half back flank Peak doing a lot of defending as he kicks towards the right wing Zanotti thumps it away from Browning no he doesn't Browning marks and will put his side into attack. Yes, at the first grab and the last grab. And Zanotti's got to get his fist in a bit too quicker. Right centre wing, Clint Browning. Ooh, wobbly old kick. The only one there is Kerr. Christie sit playing in the forward line. Shovels it out to Rinstead. He gets clear. 50 metres out. Rinstead has a shot. 
It's a good shot from the San Ava medalist, and he has picked a goal. I've yet to see Renstead miss those, you know. He just breaks into the open space, has a very, very quick look at where the goals are, and nine times out of ten he'll get them. Just have a look how quickly he does this. There he goes, weaves, bobs, quick look, 50 metres out, and no mistake, and East from Ant will claw their way back into the game. 3-1-19 to 5-3-33, and that at the 27-minute mark. Here he comes, eye on the ball, and through she goes. And that was Clinton Brown, you saw in the background. Scott gets very high, 33 plays, 19. Subiaco towards half forward, sells. Tried to knock it on, which he did, but there's no backup for him. And uh, Mainwaring slid into the fence then. But he's a tough boy from Geraldton, so other than the fact of breaking about eight fingers, it didn't worry him. Throw in. Alexander keen, but gave it straight down to Solon, who was too slow. Alexander socket off the ground, but straight to Dwayne Lamb. He kicks a long one, uses the breeze, right down to full four, looking for Keane. Great Joshua going on down there. Christie's back there too. Michael Mort, picked up by Dean, who has a snapshot. This will be a superb oh. goal if he picks it. Magnificent kick. From the boot of Warren Dean. Magnificent kick of goal from Dean. He really is a talented half forward. Looks slow, but my word, he's got a turn of pace. There's Mort backing out to try and get the ball to him. Look. He's only about 28, 30 metres out, but what a superb goal to give Subiaco their sixth. Their 6 3 39 to 3 1 19, and we're 28 and a half minutes into the first quarter. Keen to centre half forward, Dean to full forward. No matter where Keen goes, Waterson will go with him, and doing a good job on him so far, and part of the 45 plus thousand crowd. Thoroughly enjoying the way Subiaco are doing at the moment. As Scott gets the tap, knocked on by O'Loughlin. Keane gets around his man, oh. unloads a bomb into the forward line, Mort in front, chance for Spencer, it bounces for him, Spencer shoots and scores again! What a quarter Subiaco are having! Well done Peter Spencer, he knows where the goals are, as I said before, puts it straight under his boot, he just had a mo quick moment's look there, and straight through the middle, what an opportunist, there it is, have a look how quick Spencer does this. Ball comes to the ground, one grab, one look and a kick, and it's it. Stephen Green's marking him, and I think Green is the wrong man for the job, Bob. Could be. 30-minute mark coming up, 7-3-3-1, three to three, one. a great quarter by the Lions, but there's a long way to go yet. Featherby, he's got the tag on him from Solon. Goes out to the far flank to Holt. And now he picks it up. Oh, he's having trouble. Comes inboard to Solon. Oh, Solon's in trouble. Played on when he shouldn't have. It's taken by Scott. They're making errors. Featherby gets it down to Neil Taylor to Spencer. He's a long way out this time. Finally gets it back to Neil Taylor. He's inside the 50 metre line, but Mainwaring takes it away or tries to. A chance for Sells in front of Mainwaring. He's patting the ball along with him. And Stephen Green battling as well. And Ron Alexander applauds the effort. But by G. Subiaco have cranked up, aren't they? And of course you'd expect they would be. On their right half court flank, they lead 45 to 19. 30 minutes into the first quarter, as Sells once more hooks the ball into the forward line. Spencer almost, chance for Mort, leaves it behind. Mort tries to battle it through again. Featherby can't pick it up, shovels it into the open to Spencer. Siren goes as Dean has a shot at goal. Will the score count? Yes, the ball was in the air. The score will count, and it was a behind. So that makes it 7-4, 46 to Subiaco. A superb first quarter, and the breeze didn't count that much. East from Adel, 3 one
and Alex Torrance, and Jack Hawkins and Alex Torrance, which we appreciate the leg off, thank you. the second quarter of the 85 grand final East Fremantle with the breeze towards the left for Scott and Hardy It'll be a critical quarter this Rinstead still in the square plenty of lines there Scott's one of them so is Wilkinson playing better today now it goes to McNish to Taylor playing the loose man well the skipper Boots it in towards centre half forward, sells again, no can't get it, but Keane can. Oh, just stretches out, has a pot shot towards goal. Won't quite make it, and Mainwaring takes a mark in defence. Mainwaring gets the hand pass away to Stephen Green, who's on the 50 metre line. Green goes towards the boundary line and finds touch just backward of left wing. There's Glenno, uh, Phil Lamb, Glenn O'Loughlin, number nine, is shadowing Newsham. And doing a darn fine job at the moment as it's Scott and Harding to contest the throw-in. Scott with clean possession. O'Loughlin knocks it on. Featherby tried to kick it out of the air. This is Renstead for East Fremantle. The hand pass to Neesham, who's broken away from O'Loughlin. Neesham up towards half-forward. Lockyer the opportunity. He's at the 50-metre line. Bit slow, but he's done it better that time. But actually, again, lost meterage. Jones, who's on for weight cart mark. Wilson, a lovely pick-up. Loses the ball. Sparks ducks, can't get the kick in. Wilson off the ground. Jones tries to scramble it. Wilson gets the hand pass to Renstead. Through comes Crutchfield. And brilliant defence by Subiaco. Temporarily sees him out of trouble. Series of mistakes by both sides. As it's put down from Jones from Foreman. Renstead, the roaming centre man. Probably playing Rover because the feather big being shadowed by Solon. Will he get a kick? He will. Yes, yeah, Zanotti tried to bump him out of the road but got into the middle of his back. Larry Renstead, let's kick one. Umpire Johnson. There's Renstead, the 1984 Sandover medalist. Just got that thump from Zanotti. Coming in for his fifth kick. Got the breeze at his back. Puts it in towards the square. It's not a bad kick, but slightly offline. The minor score only for the Sharks. So East Fremantle moved to 3 2 20, trailing Subiaco 7 4 46. Crutchfield is obviously going to kick the ball to himself because nobody bothered to stand on the mark. Goes long from the 25 metre line. Featherby the target, almost marks. O'Loughlin tries to shovel it on. Lamb is there as well, holding the ball against Lamb. A little bit unlucky then. He had control of it, the umpire said. Clinton Browning, forward of the wing, decides to go short to Neesham. And Neesham is able to shake off the O'Loughlin tag at that stage. I need this man firing as, as Neesham fires the ball into the forward line. Oh, careful. Wilkinson almost incurred the uh, wrath of the umpire then. As Peak took the mark. Have a look and you'll see what I mean. There's the Peak mark. Wilkinson, ooh, just. I think he was going to sock on the ball. That's his fourth mark and that's his sixth kick. And Peak has had a shot at goal and put it through. Good mark and good kick Brian Peak, and he's one of the experienced players. He's been shattered there by Wilkinson, you can see. And Peak, together with Neesham and a few of the senior players, the ones are going to bring the blue and whites back into it in this quarter. A few quiet words there from the captain coach. 7-4 to 4-2, three-minute mark. And the rain uh, holding off, but the flags uh, hanging a little bit limp, so uh, the breeze not as strong as it was. Harding. Scott to Billy Jones, who's come on in this quarter and kicks it long. That's a way to kick it with the breeze. Only a Subiaco players there. One of them's Clinton Brown. Clinton Brown does it well. Gets it out to Brian Taylor. That's him, number four. As Taylor puts the ball into the forward line, sells the target. Taken away by Solon. The hand pass not good. Renstead did it well to Harding, who's run into a brick wall. Still holding the ball. Wayne Lamb tries to burst his way through, but umpire Johnson says enough is enough. Yes, I think it was lucky he was not holding the ball. Umpire Johnson could not see, apparently. So it's between centre and right wing for Subi. Scott and Harding. Harding a lovely knockdown. Renstead runs onto it, but tried to soccer it. 
Chance for O'Loughlin, Renstead tries to redeem. O'Loughlin, Wilson, Neesham, umpire. No it's, easy kicks. You're going to have to work hard today. 46 plays, 26 at the six minute mark, second quarter. The Scott, Neesham. Pete quickly got the ball on. Crutchfield thunders out. Wilson commits himself well. Harding, uh, Browning now. Wilson once again. As Billy Jones tries to trap McNeish's with him. And East Fremantle certainly settling down better in this second quarter than they did in the first. Yes, they're trying hard on this quarter. And the Subiaco back's under pressure at the moment. About 30 metres out. Alexander coming in. Do battle down there. Oh, it looked like a throw, and it is a throw. Yeah. Andrew McNeish just had his hand. No opening between his hand and the ball. There it is, straight over the shoulder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the right hand got within a bull's roar of that, Bob. Jerry Neeshan coming in for his seventh kick. And from that kick, he has kicked a goal. So East Fremantle coming back. Strongly have got their fifth. They're 5-2 to 7-4. And we're only six minutes into the second quarter. That means that East Fremantle have kicked two goals so far for the quarter. And Subiaco have not added their quarter time score. And the reason is that East Fremantle are starting to get the ball out of the centre, which they weren't doing in the first quarter. It's that pure and simple. Scott versus Harding. Scott this time. Renstead again knocks it on. Again, they get it out of the centre through Renstead to Billy Jones. Jones towards half forward. Wilson racing onto the ball with Sparks. Shepherds well. Andrew Lockyer to Wilson. Wilson chips the ball. It goes nowhere. Here comes Crutchfield to Featherby. Featherby dangerously across goals to Clinton Brown, but it's going to be okay. Clinton Brown's kick's not good. Browning, Clinton snaps it up, shoots the full forward, and Clinton Brown breathes a sigh of relief as Clinton Browning misses the shot. A lot of Clint's around the place, and it, uh, a couple of mistakes by either side there. Clinton Browning never steady then. He had the breeze coming from right to left and uh, didn't set it out far enough. 46 to 33 in favour of Subiaco. Eight minute mark coming up in the second. And the crowd have had plenty of action today as Crutchfield kicks to the members' flank. Zanotti. We don't get any second chance. Comes out to Mainwaring. Rankin. Oh, no kick. Mainwaring. Anybody going to get a kick? The umpire letting it go. Featherby's in there. Gets it to Neil Taylor. Does it well to Brian Taylor, his brother. And Warren Dean, no, he's missed it. On the half forward line, recovers quickly. Gets it towards full forward, and Waterson has missed. Oh, Eris Delore as Waterson comes out with it. Oh, didn't he do it well? He just pushed Mort off. He's a big man, you know, but he was able to turn on a threepenny bit and get that out of trouble. As Featherby quickly onto the boot. A high kick. All the arms in the air. Opportunity for Taylor. Bumps it onto Keane. Keane goes back into trouble, didn't want it, as out charges uh, oh. Holt. Oh, down went O'Loughlin. Nisham, uh, Solon it was. No Lachlan to get the kick. O'Loughlin, the long kick into the forward line. Sars so sells it, bounced off his chest. And Waterson, the chance to clear. That's a couple that Sells has missed like that. Renstead out of trouble, can't get the kick. Sells out the back door. Rankin's on top of it. Renstead is there as well. And have a look at the clip around the ear to O'Loughlin. Here it comes. Biff. Solon. Short arm jab. Well, it's a grand final. It certainly is. And it's played like one too. There's not much science out there, but there's plenty of pressure. What a great battle these two are having. As Phil Lamb picks it up. Christie and Mort. Christie in front. Does it well. Kicks it to the wide open spaces out there underneath the old scoreboard. Very close to the line. Zanotti comes in first. Keeps it in play. Browning. And finally the ball's got out of play on the half forward flank. Out of side. 46 to 33. It's going to be a tight grand final. I can sense it. Coming up to the 10 minute mark. Scott and Harding. They're going to duel all day, these two. Solon gets it out to Browning. Browning's kick. Once more comes to the centre, and Renstead takes it. Lovely kick too. Good mark for Renstead. And Harding just having the better of the duels in the centre at around the ground. That's why he's from Adler back in this game. 
as the ball is kicked into the forward line. Sweeping on it is Roger Kerr, dangerous player. High left foot kick, Alexander the target. Crutchfield keeps it away from him. Alexander swoops, tried to get the hand pass out to Lockyer who kicked off the ground. But it's gone out of bounds and will be thrown in. It's 7 4 46 to 5 3 33 at the 10 minute mark, second quarter. Alexander to do the ruck work. Scott came from behind him. Pete used his body well, but Wilkinson ensured that it crossed the line out of bounds. Clint Roberts on the ground now for Subiaco to throw him the 25 metre mark. Alexander in front takes it, can't get his foot to the ball. Scramble down there. No Lockman takes it over the line. He's a battle of Dino Lockman. So you got a nice old thick ear from Solon a few moments ago, so the kid's fairly tough. He's done the shadow job last week and he's doing it well again today. 25 metre line. That's the player I'm talking about. And he's kicked it right in the arms of Murray Renstead, who will kick from about 55 metres out. It's not a bad kick, Renstead, if he uses a breeze towards the right. He's already got one goal. He'll have to do what Mort did in the first quarter and start the ball out to the right and let the breeze bring it back. Let's see if he does it. He does it all right, and he has done it well. And now to the Sharks. Murray Redstead has scored his second, and East Fremantle well and truly back in this game. They trail by just seven points at the 11-minute mark. 6-3-39 to 7-4-46. And East uh, Fremantle are playing as well in the second quarter as Subiaco did in the first, and I think largely it's because it's the side that's getting the ball out of the middle that's doing well, and that's what East Fremantle are doing at the moment. Keen back to centre-half forward. Scott and Harding. Harding just puts it down to uh, Renstead, and this is what's happening. Renstead is starting to dominate. Waterson gets the run past, kicks into the forward line, knocked away from Pete. Zanotti goes down. Wilkinson to Dwayne Lamb. Dwayne Lamb has to hurry his kick, which he does. Featherby waits for it to come to him. Now gets the hand pass away. Too slow, Wilkinson. As sweeping on the ball is Mainwaring. Mainwaring kicks into the forward line. Fair a grand diving mark. Quick hand pass off. This is Wilson. He can run in and have a shot. 50 metres out, Peter Wilson. Long kick, looks okay. It is. And have we got a grand final on our hands now? Typical Peter Wilson, been out of the game for five or ten minutes. Bursts into it with his dash and kicks a badly needed goal for the Sharks. There he is. Kerr taking a good mark. The back up from Wilson. Look at him go. Balances just at the right time. And now it's 7 3 to 7 4, 46 to 45 in favour of Subiaco, the 13 minute mark. Nothing in it. Typical grand final. Keynes come under the ball. Goes to Harding and gets the tap out. Dwayne Lamb. Bounces wrong for Subiaco. Bryce Foreman takes it. Rinse said he's all over the ground at the moment. But the ball this time has gone out of play. Well, uh, looked like Sparks had a little dip at him. Missed. And Renstead's going to get the kick. And this will be his eighth possession for the first 13 minutes of the second quarter. That's the reason why he's from Adler back to within one point of Subiaco. That's why he won the San over middle. Renstead putting the ball high. Come to ground, a chance for Kerr, Zanotti, Taylor, Neesham, Lamb, Mainwaring, Kerr. He's from Adler desperate in attack and Subiaco just as desperate in defence because there's one point the difference and that's at the 13 and three quarter minute mark second quarter Keane gets the knockdown Nisham pushing along in front of him McNish goes in Nisham trying to find somebody to give it to this is Roger Kerr he's caught Renstead's not Renstead slices it into Wilson took his eye off it but Wilson's through he's caught again by Lamb Opportunity for Keane, he's gone. Boy, it's a nice tight old game at the moment. And Lockyer gave a clip round the air to Crutchfield and has given away a kick. And Crutchfield applauds him and says, thanks heaps. You get no second chance out there. And there's Michael Crutchfield. He's made a name for himself as fullback in this final round. Kicks it out towards the flank. Taken by Harding, he boots it back. He's 
kicked it out of play. 46 to 45 at the 15 minute mark coming up and it's a tight second quarter. There's an inter Alexander's off and Turco coming up. Well, Ale and Bevan Warner warming up to come on for Subiaco. And at the 15 minute mark, Bob, Subiaco had not scored since quarter time. Well, Alexander's quite happy with his charge at the moment. <laughs> Alexander running around the boundary to the booze. That's what you get for being a coach. Yeah. Comes up towards the wing. Keen's in front, Dean behind. They spoil each other. Foreman's in there too, taken by Wilson again. He's having a purple patch. Oh, good mark to Browning. Clifton Browning from 55 metres out. He's got the breeze over his right shoulder and he's a good kick. And coming in for his seventh kick for the game. The goal here would give East Fremantle the lead for the first time in the game. Clint Browning has kicked one. Kevin Sparks off, water on. Good move. Browning kicks it high. That's a breeze, carry it. And it does it well. And the blue and whites have hit the front. Well, that's Clinton Browning's second goal. And East from Adels showing the experience that they've got from last year's grand final and throughout the qualifying rounds this year. Have steadied in the face of early adversity. John, that breeze a little bit stronger than we think because a lot of goals scored from a long way out. So Subiaco now trailing 46 to 51. It's 8-3 to 7-4. East from Adel's experience and ability to get the ball out of the centre coming to the fore. Can Subiaco steady? And stop this East from Adel onslaught, which so far has seen five goals for the quarter. Keane and Hardy. Keane. Dwayne Lamb. But it's East from Adel to attack. This is Wilson. Wilson to Billy Jones. Jones can score. It's a long low kick at goal. Just offline. Wilson has added pace to the centre line and Wilson's had a purple patch for the last 10 minutes. There's East Fremantle bench. And this is Michael Crutchfield to bring the ball back into play for the Lions. Nice kick. Keen the target. He's got to start holding a few, but he got that down nicely to Featherby. Featherby kicks towards Sells. Sells out in front marks. Got Dwayne Lamb available. This is good play by Sells to get around couple, fires it longer to the forward line, Scott out in front, he's interfered with it, he'll take a kick, but gee, soon you need a goal here, Bob. I certainly do. Here's the good. kick again. Oh, a light yeah. touch, very light. Yeah. So, Phil Scott now to kick from 45 metres out, his side trails. The goal here would give them the lead by a point. There's the Scott kick. It looks all right. It is, and Subiaco are back in front at the 20-minute mark of the second quarter. Well, goals to both sides. That's uh, Subiaco's first goal for the quarter, and the heavily bandy Scott. Here it is from another angle. Plenty of concentration from him. He's having a spell off the ball at the moment. And no doubt about the result. Subiaco lead 8-4-52 to 8 uh, uh, eight no, it's all tied up. It's 8 4 52 apiece. Yes, 52 apiece. I thought they were five points in front. They weren't, they were a goal. Keen again, opposed to Harding. Harding gets it down to Nisham, who can't get it out. While it comes back from Featherby. Holt. He's well tackled. In comes Featherby again. And throws himself in. Back to Feathers, who has a long kick towards full forward. Scott's in front. He's got no backup and rolls through for the minor score. How handy that would have been to have had a Sells or a uh, Peter Spencer just lurking down at the bottom of that pack. A classic example for them, but uh, unfortunately wasn't available. And that kick into play is going to have to be taken again by Waterson because the, the goal umpire hadn't finished waving the behind. So... Subi now are a point in front, 8-5-53 to 8-4-52 at the 19 minute mark as Waterson comes out towards Nisham the other way this time. Wilson hand passes it away from himself, does well to keep it in, scrambles it up towards the left wing. Here comes Roger Kerr, he can't keep it in play though. 
as the press photographers get mixed up with the Eastern Mantle forward. Keen and Harding. Keen got it down. Better be, uh, I on think, has put it out on the full. Yes, he has, and it'll be the kick to be taken by Eastern Mantle's Rankin. Rankin putting it up high. Out in front, Wilkinson. Still Wilkinson, a nice hand pass. Lamb didn't take possession of it. Turco did, who's on. Turco, a high kick into the forward line. Back goes Clinton Brown. He better not make a mistake. He has. And they capitalise. Roger Kerr soccers but misses. There's two defensive players there. Zanotti and Brown. No talking, apparently. As Crutchfield takes it again. Under pressure, the Subiaco defence. Half-back flank, Keane from behind, Harding in front. Nish on the ground with Turco. Featherby doing well now. Wayne Lamb. Bevan Warner's in trouble. Still battling with Bain wearing. He's going to get the kick. Great courage by Bevan Warner. He was not in a position to attack the ball, but he did nevertheless. He sends it up towards the centre. Oh, right through the arms of Phil Lamb. He lost sight of it. Picked up by Sells. He boots it towards full forward. Which way will it bounce into the arms of Scott, who has a putt shot and goes into the arms of Foreman. Gee, that was lucky. Foreman coming out to the 25 metre line. Now runs to the 50 metre line. This is good defence and kicks it in short to Christie. George Christie between centre and wing. To right half forward. Browning the target. Knocked away from him. Mario Turco hooks it cleverly. Rankin caught by Zanotti. Great tackle. They're not out of trouble yet. Kerr to Peak. Peak back to Rankin. Rankin a high, long kick to full forward. I think that may have hit the post. Yeah. Yes, it did. And it was lucky for Subiaco it did because had it not, Mario Turco was there to capitalise. Show that you play to the whistle, you don't stop. He's from Adel bench doing some pondering Alexander there as Crutchfield brings it back into play again keen the target holds that one no he doesn't as the hand pass comes to Dwayne Lamb Lamb kicks quickly close to Dean who marks and plays on Dean pops it up high coming out Scott he can't take it chance for Mainwaring Mainwaring clears Harding in the right spot through his hands it goes Renstead can get the hand pass away. East from Mantle into attack. Wilson does it well over to Kerr. Back to Wilson. He's inside 50 metres. There's a long kick towards full forward, but this one's offline. It's gone out of play. East from Mantle in front by a point. They're 8 6 54, Subi 8 5 53 at the 22 minute mark. And Peter Wilson's had a grand quarter. Oh, it's a kick out on the full. That's a bad mistake by the Subi Echo defence. Can't afford to do that. Wilkinson did that, Bob, and that was a bad mistake. Certainly was, because uh, Lockyer's got it. It's not a bad kick. A kick from 40 metres out, right on the boundary. He's right by the central carpet sign, which is 43 metres out. Is it a mark? Yeah, Roger Kerr's claiming it. He's right on the boundary on the other side. He's only about 20 metres out going to be difficult to kick from there, he goes around, oh he's come out, where's he gone? He's kicking for Subiaco, he's gone up towards the 50 metre line, he's found Jones, mistakes the law, and it's taken by Dean. Dean left puts the ball into the forward line, Robert uses the body, Solon to Christie, Christie back to Solon, Solon running back into the fence to Stephen Green, can't see Peter Spencer at the moment as Stephen Green kicks the ball out of trouble, knocked on well by Lockyer. Chance for Kerr, but Bevan Warner grabs it well. Cross to Taylor, but it's Dean to throw. But no lucky Bevan Warner. I'd still sooner have him on the half back line than uh, than Sparks, quite frankly. Is yeah, there he is. He threw it off. Yep. Roger Kerr as Wilkinson forces the ball towards the boundary line. They talk about getting a good angle from a boundary, John. I've never seen Roger Kerr uh, get as good angles he got before. Now what happened, he was going to kick it to Billy Jones who slipped over at the wrong moment. So he was nowhere near where the ball was supposed to be. As the hand pass out from Keane's not good. Wilson, a left foot shot at goal. 
is a gem. Absolute gem. He's had a tremendous quarter face of Peter Wilson. He's kicked two goals, been instrumental in a couple of others, and I would say that uh, Subiaco have got to tighten their defence on this fellow. There's Lowy Keane coming in. Back of the pack to Rankin. The ever alert Wilson, this time on the left foot. And he's given the Blue and Whites a handy lead. They lead 60 to 53. We're into the time on period in the second. It's been a tired second quarter. Harding back on, Keane still on the ball. And Harding gets the thump. Taken by Subiaco's McNish towards Dean. And Dean's about 65 metres out, but he's a good kick. Oh, look at it. It's right up into the square. He gave it a chance for sure. Minor score. He's from Adelaide kicked six goals for this quarter and Subiaco have managed just the one. As the ball will be brought back into play by Waterson, the lead there from Mainwaring. Can't mark, Harding a chance. He's caught, well caught too. As uh, Lamb goes in and battles for the ball, tries oh. to get it out to Sells but can't. And that was the right word. And when they are back, and there's a uh, player in the hands of the trainers. Mainwaring, I think he's got a Coming whack out. Bad luck for the young fellow playing in his first grand final. Must have spit his head on the top because that's where they're holding the towel. As once again the umpire is called on to adjudicate. And uh, Mainwaring doesn't appear to be in a lot of trouble but must have a fairly nasty gash on the top of his head. Gavin Wake back on the ground. We're at the 26 and a half minute mark. Can Subi get a goal? Nisham says no. Nisham gave it away to Holt to Renstead, to Rankin, to Wilson. Wilson's through. Awkward kick. Lux of fortune in the arms of Lockyer. He's from Adel on fire at the moment. Lars Lockyer ran into a brick wall and got straight past him. Now fires it into the forward line. Odd Brown, a timely mark. Well, if anything was going to test his shoulder out, that would have. Clinton Browning hanging onto the ball, but it's Clinton Brown's kick. Six points the difference, 54 plays 60 as Brown puts it up high again looking for Zanotti but Lockyer too strong and they must keep it away from these tall East from out forwards. Yeah, this fellow's kicked 71 goals, 20 behind for the year and he had a great career at full forward and centre half. Lockyer from 50 metres out. Starts the kick off nicely, back it comes but not enough. 9-7, 61 to 8, 6, 54 at the 27 and three-quarter minute mark, second quarter. Yes, well, East Fremantle have scored a lot of goals, so there'll be three or four minutes of time on, I would say. As Michael Puxfield looking for the lead, there's not many forthcoming. He goes out towards Scott. With him is his shadow, Harding. Featherby's there too, and the ball's gone out of play on the half-forward flank. Been a typical grand final in this first half. Not a great deal of science, but plenty of pressure, plenty of toughness. Scott gets it down. Taken by Rankin. And that's what Subiaco have done all through the final, smother the ball off the boot. They do it well. Sun's coming out, which will dry proceedings out quite nicely. Appreciated by the big crowd. Scott gets it down again. Stephen Green's in there battling. Shows a lock and shovels it out to Dwayne Lamb. He puts it on further to Philip Lamb. He comes to half four looking for Sells and finds him. Stephen Sells on. Having a great game, Sells. A bit quiet early in the quarter. It's his ninth kick. Puts it up high, looking for Keane over the top. Keane. Chance for Taylor. Taylor on the bottom. Shovels it out to Mort, who's being held. And gee, if ever Subi needed a goal, they need this one. They trail by seven points. There can't be much time to go. And there's the kick to Dean. He waited for it. And great spoiling by Bryce Foreman. But he's carried the ball out of bounds, and it'll be thrown in. Good tackle by Jared Neesham. Yes, I think Mort could have gone longer then. It was not a good kick to Dean. He had to just stand there and wait for the thing to come down. Keane, Harding over the top. Keane tried to have a snapshot, couldn't. Taylor out the back door. Dean being held. He'll get the kick, and I bet he won't try and short pass. 
Well, he's only about 40 to 45 out, and so it's a good kick there it is. Definitely held. 29 and a half minutes gone in the second quarter, so this may well be Subiaco's last foray into the forward line for the first half. Dean has got one goal, and that's not going to be his second. And there's the siren, so we couldn't have picked it better. 8.755 Subiaco, 9.761, a goal the difference at half time. Subiaco and East from Adel, East from Adel in front by 10 points. Dwayne Lamb to half forward, Dean in front and Marks. Warren Dean being a very effective set of half forward. That's his sixth mark and he's coming in for his 10th kick, John. Good effort from set of half forward and it's a good kick too, a long one. Keane pushed his man in the back and then couldn't take the mark. East from Adel ganging up on Keane and doing it effectively as Billy Jones has it, right half back flank. He's got number 16, Glenn Holt, available. And Holt got there in time. He scrambles it on to Foreman, who marks. Lease from Adel steady things down after Subiaco's initial thrust in the Foreman's hurt line. himself. Left the uh, right knee of his could be a problem. And Harding enabled, uh, able to take position and take a good mark. And Foreman in a bit of trouble at the moment. Harding with the ball on right centre wing to put his side into attack. Hooks it up towards centre half forward for the blue and whites, kicking against the breeze. What a jostling going up there. Rinsed it again with yet another kick. Wilson just keeps it in. Wilkinson does too. Close to the line. Clinton Brown to Scott to Brian Taylor's good play. And the Subiaco defence get out of trouble, but Nisham takes a well judged mark. Right on the arms of the general in the centre. He boots it towards half four, looking for Browning. And Browning gets the free kick and will kick from 55 metres out. Is it any wonder that uh, Subiaco are very anxious to keep Nisham out of this game? And to his credit, he's kept in it because he pinpoints the ball beautifully in the forward line. It's gone short to Turco, and Turco will kick from the same spot right in the centre. 55 metres out directly in front. Subiaco into the ground against the breeze. Turco, a very experienced player. <laughs> Torpedo, punt kick right to the square. The big thump away by the Subiaco defence in Scott, and the ball's gone through for a yeah, play. Good defensive play by Scott. There's Alexander content to look on at the moment with the uh, Sharks 11 points in front. There's the Ooh. kick in, dangerous, but it's OK as Bevan Warner emerges with it. Kicks high, Dean comes out and takes another mark. Warren Dean on right centre wing, kicks to half forward where he should be. Keane out in front, and they're about the only marks the big fella's taken today. The one's on his chest, but he's uncontested. That's only his second mark, John, you're quite right. He's had plenty of opportunities to mark over the head, uh, Peter, but just hasn't done it. Keane from 70 metres out. Oh, enormous kick. Enormous kick from Keane. He's standing right on the edge of the square then. And Keane has uh, it's come off hands and it's been forced through. So it's 56 to 62 at the three minute mark of the third quarter. Could have kicked a couple of there with a bit of luck. Yeah, uh, Waterson brings the ball into play. Dean in front can't mark. That was Rankin to Renstead. Renstead to Green. Green left puts it out of trouble. Going across his lamb. With him is Foreman, who's recovered. Good to see. Bryce Foreman, a long hand pass to Renstead. Renstead handballs in board. Back it comes to Renstead from Wilson. Renstead, another hand pass, this time to Turco. Turco bursts into the forward line, fires it up into the 25 metre line, but Crutchfield marks last line of defence. Timely mark by the fullback, holding up that attack. Goes towards the outer side, taken by Clint Brown. Fairly strong breeze that uh, Subiaco are kicking with in this quarter. Oh, it's not good play. Brown turns onto his left foot for some reason or other. Renstead's got it again. What a tiger he is. Picked up by Kerr. 
Kerr goes right towards full ball and there's a great mark to Clinton Browning. Tremendous mark to Browning. Threw himself in the air. He played pretty well, there it is. He kicked right to the square. Have a look at Browning. Tremendous mark right in the square. He's right on the line. I think Browning thought that had gone through, Bob. It's about 12 metres out. Brian Taylor waiting for the run around. There he goes. Clinton Browning has a puck shot. It's a good shot because he's put it through for full points. Well, East Fremantle's experience starting to come to the fore now. It's Clinton Browning's third goal after a very, very good mark. And Renstead is the key uh, as far as East Fremantle are concerned, the way he's been getting the ball out of the centre, particularly since quarter time. In the first half, John, he had 15 possessions and uh, he's already in this quarter had uh, five. So 20 possessions for the game thus far. That explains it all. 10 8 68 to 8 8 56. Five minutes into the third quarter. Line ball. Solon scrambles it forward. Off the ground. Only as far as Zanotti. Whoa, he's caught. Got rid of it. Bumped away in defence by Brown. Not far enough. Here comes Billy Jones to Kerr. Kerr left foot. Kick it. Goals through. And a fight going on at centre half forward with Lockyer, but it's finished. And East Fremantle running hot at the five minute mark of this quarter. Yes, they're getting the ball out of the centre. Jones getting it there over to Kern. There's a bubble. Lockyer's <laughs> uh, got a step over toe hold on Clinton Brown there. He's trying to straighten his shoulder up. Trying to bury him. And uh, Kerr doesn't waste many opportunities around the goals. Three clear goal lead now to the blue and white, 74 to 56. And Subiak, I want their runners to come to the fore in the latter part of this quarter with the breeze towards the Perth end. Scott's in there to get them going. Trying to get the ball out the centre desperately. Waterson coming through. And the kick's going to Subiak, O'Dwayne Lamb. Yeah, these are the guys they need to get going, the Dwayne Lambs and... Uh, Dwayne Lamb, yes. These fellas the got to get run. Keen, they need more from him. Taylor's not co much cooperation, unfortunately, from the Lions at the moment. They'll throw it in that forward pocket for coming up to the seven minute mark. I can't see Peter Spencer on the ground yet. Yes, he was at the start. Was he? No, no, can't see him. I, I just know why he's not on. Keane got the knockdown. Stephen Green to Neesham, who's got rid of his tag a bit. Neesham towards the boundary line, and it'll be thrown in at 74 to 56. They must get more from Featherby as well. Peter Spencer in the right full forward pocket, John. OK, thanks, Bob. Right full there. There you can see his helmet. Yeah, got him. Number 22. There he is. Not doing much at the moment. It's the hand pass from Main where he comes out to Waterson. Waterson kicks it out. Brown oh. off. Didn't mark. Took too long. Featherby went to ground and will get the kick. I, I agree with you, but they, you know, the McNishes and the Dwayne Lambs and the Neil Taylors and these fellas have got to really lift their rating if they're to get back into this game. Featherby will kick from the end of the square, which has got to be a good 70 metres out from goal. A long, high kick to the edge of the square. Dean goes up, can't mark, and it's out in the right full forward pocket. 74 to 56, eight minutes into the third quarter. So Clinton Brown down in the forward line at the moment, so a couple of shuffling of players by Bunton. Keen in there against Hardy. Nisham, and certainly shaking his tag off at the moment. Sells giving him one to go on with, and another throw in. Right full forward, pocket about 25 metres out. Coming up to the nine minute mark, and uh, 74 to 56, 18 points of difference. Another scramble. What's happening is that Subiaco, whereas in previous weeks were the ones who are absolutely throwing themselves in at the bottom of the pack to get the ball, it's East Fremantle that are doing it now, and they're the ones that are shoveling it forward. Subiaco. Keane gets a thump. Spencer, what can he do? He gives it to Neil Taylor, who has a shot. I think it's a goal. It is from the boot of Skipper Neil Taylor. Well, that's exactly the sort of thing that I was talking about. These are the players, the little men from uh, Subiaco that have got to get the mobile and got to get that ball forward. That was a perfect example of it. Spencer, who we mentioned, Taylor. Left foot kick by Taylor. 
G-Subi needed that. They're 9 8 62 to 11 8 74. 12 points in it. Nothing really, but it's just that the quality of East Fremantle's play seems to be a little more desperate. And there's a policeman suggesting to those people that uh, maybe they shouldn't be there. Don't like his chances of getting them down, though. Sun shining again, briefly. In the centre, Harding and Scott. Scott Featherby on the bottom. He battled hard, Peter Featherby. Yeah. 33 years old, 294 games. He's probably feeling it. Misham slams that one away. Taylor caught, carried forward, holding oh. the ball. Well, he didn't make an attempt because I reckon he thought he was being carried forward and would get the kick. It's into the forward line. Browning almost. Zanotti down to uh, Brown, who's gone back. Brown fires it out wide, looking for and finding Dwayne Lamb. Dwayne Lamb. 15 metre penalty. Going to get a 15 metre penalty. And another one if he's not careful. Allowed to play on. Oh dear, got the hand pass to Brian Taylor, who's forced to kick under pressure. Not a good kick. Scott goes up. Can't take the mark. Far side of the ground. Hand pass out to Neil Taylor. Ran into a brick wall in the form of Glenn Holton will be thrown in. Two goals of difference. Ten and a half minute mark, third quarter. Hiding again. Clint Roberts. Nishan's there too. Nishan's going to get a kick. He's getting away from O'Loughlin. Brilliantly getting away from O'Loughlin at the moment. Waterson, one of the leading kick getters on the ground. Looking for Stephen Green. Zanotti using pace. Boundary line. Throwing on the half forward flank. Blue and white territory. Another ruckman inside at the moment. So Wilson will come in. Lockyer gets it over to Pete, who's been pretty quiet. Kerr. Taylor chucked that off. Dwayne Lamb's got to fight three of them. David Rankin using pace against Brown. Well done, Rankin. Gets it up to the forward of the Browning and takes a mark. He's doing well for the Browning. Yeah, Crutchfield too far behind then. He was very cross with himself, Michael Crutchfield. But the play on is to Lockyer, who marks, and East Fremantle doing it well. Subiaco's defence, very suspect at the moment. There's that kick from Rankin, a nice left footer. And Lord Crutchfield very cross with himself. Lockyer coming in for his seventh kick. Lockyer from 50 metres out, puts it on its way, but it's offline. One point. This Lockyer hasn't kicked a goal yet, but uh, Browning's kicking the goals up there. He's kicked three, Rinstead two, and Peter Wilson two. Michael Crutchfield goes to the outer side, which is a flank that Subiaco have got to attack down. Featherby Soxers on, there's nobody in the centre at all. Mainwaring had an injury early, but he's come back. Nisham in there to give him a hand. Andrew McNish to Featherby to Spencer. Taylor gets tangled up with Featherby. And the umpire will bounce it down, still in the square. Unfortunately, Peter Featherby was the one that got right into Taylor's back. Not much you could do about that, though. 13-minute mark coming up, 75 to 62. Nisham doing well now. Just strolls to the half-back line. Kicks it out into no-man's land. Chance for Phil Lamb, but the boundary line is too close. That's why they call him the general, you know. He, he knew there was nobody to give that ball to, and there was no way he was going to waste the kick, so he kicked for the line and found it. There's Scott over the top, but not a good knock. Well knocked down by O'Loughlin to Taylor. Taylor scrambles it towards Sells. Christie's with him. Sells with the ball out in front over Rannett. This allows Christie in to clear. Lovely long kick. Warner from behind. Wilson in front with a field. Free kick, I think. Not a mark. Yeah, no, no. That was a free kick for sure, which is 11. Wilson plays on to the 50-metre line. Pete knocked away from him. Taylor comes through. Almost hand pass to straight to Brian Peake. Peake to Roger Kerr. Kerr's about 65 metres out. Plenty of time to go around. Get it to Wilson. Wilson out in front of himself. Still battling hard, Peter Wilson. But can't get it. And gives uh, Wilkinson a bit of an elbow in the throat to go on with. Plenty of courage by Wilkinson. 
Featherby having to do the ruck work. Lockyer down to Kerr. Zanotti tries to come through. Renstead, Taylor out to Zanotti. Quick kick from Zanotti. Subiak over to their forward line. Chance for Sells. Traps but caught. A call to play on as Lamb emerges. Goes short. What sort of a kick was that? Up the side of his boot, Neil Taylor coming in. Oh, a quick kick from Taylor. Chance for Dean, can't get it. It's in the four line. Sells was tripped. And Sells must get the kick this time. And will take it from about 40 metres out. Stephen Sells, he's kicked two. There he is. Yep. Yeah, plain trip. And an opportunity for the Lions to come back. They trail by 13 points. A goal here would make it interesting, Bob, and they certainly need it. 15 minute mark coming up. The breeze over Sell's shoulder. He's kicked two towards the Perth end of the ground. The left footer comes in and slams it through for full. No, no. He hasn't hit the post. A little bit unlucky. Gee whiz. If ever they needed a goal, that was it. That was unfortunate for them. As Waterson brings the ball into play, the target is Christie, and there he is. George Christie, right half back flank. Will kick towards the wing. McNish goes up. A hand on the shoulder of whom? McNish. Interference. Okay. McNish's kick. Well, O'Loughlin stood down and waited for Featherby to go up, uh, for uh, Nisham to go up. Keen. Hand pass to Dean. Dean a long kick towards full forward. It didn't break for him and threw for a point. Kicking wildly at goal, Subiaco at the moment. And they've got too many players down. They're relying on about five or six players at the moment. They've got to have a team effort to get back into this game. 11-9-75 to 9-10-64 at the 16-minute mark of the third quarter. Kick in from Waterson. Good long kick right up to the point of the square. That's the way to kick it. Into the centre of the goes. Rankin there from Solon, picked up by Featherby, out to McNish, out of it a chance as Spencer gets it just over the 50 metre line. Well he could, in his prime he could kick that far, he's got the breeze, let's see what he can do. He's kicked two, he's well patted this fellow, more than some of the test players. A lot of injuries during his career, he's got to be well patted before he comes out to play, it's a wonder he can run at all, it's a tribute to his courage. Tell you what, when he's about 45 years of age I don't think he's going to be able to walk. Peter Spencer kicks it high, the breeze takes it in, won't quite make it, but Kane's got it. That's the way to get them, Laurie Kane. he's showing the crowd. That's, I think, the first mark he's taken overhead. It is, it is indeed. Laurie Kane from point blank range, uses that height in front of the pack, they had no chance of reaching him, and that's what Subiak have got to do. Kane, 12 metres out, this would be a handy one for the Lions, and he has got it. OK, so Subiaco starting to look a little better now. Bear in mind, they're kicking with the breeze. They're 10-10-70 to 11-9-75. Five points in it. You know, if, you, if there wasn't a scoreboard, you'd think that East from Adler were about five or six goals in front the way they're playing. I don't think the breeze is quite as strong as it was, John Early. Now that's Keane's first goal. And Subiaco, there it is. It's going sort of down that way a bit. In gusts at the moment. Yeah. Well, five points the difference in the 1985 Grand Final. 75 to 70 at the 18 minute mark. Scott, draw big Ooh. thump. That's what they need. Knocked away. Wilkinson, caught. Socket off the ground cleverly by Harding into the open space. Chance for Featherby. Not getting the sort of run he's been getting in previous weeks. Scramble on the uh, East from Adel half forward line. And a bounce down. Again, it'll be Scott and Harding. Not a good bounce. Favours uh, Warner. It looked like he took the thump then. McNish underneath. Well, clean bowl everybody except Turco. Turco went back to Mainware to kick long into the forward line. Brown tried to thump it away. Won't bounce for Zanotti. Does now. He kicked the way he was running, Zanotti. I couldn't understand that. Just blazed away with the ball. There's a pressure well, kick. I think he may be going to get a kick anyway. Pushing the back, apparently, who's kicked it. And it's coming back to the runner, Zanotti, who's having a little bit of trouble getting going today with those runs. Kicks from the full back line towards the wing. No mark. Solon gets it out to peak. It's smothered. 
Renstad been in everything. Central the ground. Peak brings it back to half forward. Nation's battling. So is Wilson. Zanotti a chance. With him is Rankin. The boundary line's too close and throw it on the half forward. Play. A bit more desperation coming into Subiaco's defence now. They're back with a sniff in this game. Five points the difference. We're approaching the 19 and a half minute mark. Big thump down by Scott. Only as far as Renstead. Oh, he threw it back to Peak. Chance for Subi. Here they go. Dwayne Lamb can't pick it up. Does so now. Left puts the ball into the forward line. Bounces nicely for Christie. He brings it back into the centre of the ground. Taylor being held. Back comes McNish. Turns in trouble. Tried to scramble it forward. Here comes Taylor. Had to hurry. Does. Left foot kick. Christie going back. Brilliantly taken by Mort. What can he get going? Michael Mort puts it up high. Neil Taylor waiting for it and marks. Brilliant kick for Mort. Used the breeze and Neil Taylor coming in to take it. Oh, oh. he's tipped it in wrong. Tried to give it back to Featherby to improve the angle and it's come unstuck as Watterson went for the boundary line and found it. And Neil Taylor distraught. Yes, a little bit of an experience there. They're trying to come inboard and they're not coming in, coming up right. Yes, the mark to Taylor, that was good. But uh, chance for him to atone with the left foot. Fires it into the forward line, but it's offline. That's Four points the difference. Well, that's twice that's happened. They've had a kick right on the boundary line. They've tried to come back inboard. It has not come off. So perhaps you might be better to try and kick at the square and hope one of your big men mark. 75 to 71 in favour of the blue and whites as Waterson brings it out to the grandstand flank looking for Solon. Well picked up by Holt to Renstead. Played a great game, this fellow. Boots it to half forward. Browning's in front. Cratchfield's with him. Cratchfield recovers. And it comes to McNish. Back to the centre. Harding sets and takes a good mark. Plays up quickly to Peak. Too tall for Featherby as Peak gets it up towards Rankin. Race on here between Rankin and Lamb. Rankin being held. No, Lamb being held. Yes. Started off like a German bandit, Phil Lamb, but uh, Subi lost ascendancy across the centre as the game has progressed. As Lamb's kick up to the wing, knocked on. Back goes Mainwaring. Sells comes in to meet him, but Mainwaring did it strongly. Clean bowls, everybody. Harding back to Peak, who's on the left wing. Peak to Harding. Scott trying to close. Harding can't control it, throwing. Some of those Subiaco players are battling, they've got to lift their game, but they're only four points out of it. It's a tough third quarter, 22 minute mark, 75 to 71 in favour of East Fremantle. Solon gets it out to Rankin, opportunist some of these players, particularly Rankin. Hit out towards the square. Oh, bounce doesn't favour Subiaco, but I think they'll get a kick. They will. So Nutty, East Fremantle doesn't like it. No, the kick was definitely there, and I... I can tell you that uh, had they not got the kick, Billy Jones was on his way. There was nobody in front of him. 15 metre penalty. Mark Zanotti, just about the centre ground, goes straight down the middle, looking for Keane. The big thump away. Chance for Taylor Neal. Sees the lead further field. Over to Dean. 30 metres out. Dean straightens up. Missed. Oh, he's missed. Oh, possibly misses by the Subiaco forwards at the 23 minute mark oh shades of the second semi-final this crucial misses at critical times and that would go down as one of them he should not have missed that he was into an open goal 20 meters out and that should have been a goal as Bryce Foreman knocks it on Taylor comes through Lamb to McNish oh, oh McNish another one straight to Foreman Errors compounding on errors for Subiaco as Lockyer gets the ball. He's caught, got rid of it, socketed it off the ground. Dwayne Lamb went in and it's going to be thrown in the Dero Beer. Lockyer was very close to holding the ball too. Alexander getting up and having a word or two to say to the umpire. It'll be thrown in. Lockyer got the tap. Renstead comes in, gets the hand pass to Kerr. Kerr's kick. It's a great move to put Clinton Browning up there at full forward. He's behind Crutchfield then. Able to juggle the mark and uh, he's kicked three already. 
coming in for his 11th kick. Point blank range, Browning, no mistake, and that makes the Subiak a shot at goal a little while ago even worse. There's Kerr, he's an opportunist, this fellow. Look at Browning, he's at the back, juggles it beautifully, and Mike Crutchfield just cannot uh, beat this fellow at the moment. 10 12, 72 Subiaco, trail East Humantle 12 9, 81. The breeze probably not a great factor at the moment. We're coming up to the 25 minute mark of the centenary grand final. Scott and Harding, two great ruckmen all the year. Harding comes out with it, he's played a great game. Renstead on the half forward flank. With him is Dwayne Lamb. And Lamb has put the ball. Dwayne Lamb unfortunately got only one way to turn. Towards the boundary to get onto his left foot. And There's Renstead Bunton. knew. Bunton uh, wondering what to do next to bring these lines back into it, into contention. Locke has put his hand on the shoulder. Scott will get the kick. But into the time on period. As Scott boots it into the centre. High kick. They wait for it to come to ground. This is Wilkinson emerging with it. Wilkinson fires it long into the forward line. Keen jostling. Taylor. Somebody's got to take possession of the ball. Dean. Long searching hand pass to Lamb who's come way down. Lamb shoots to full forward. That's better. Subi back in it once again. Well, they're doing it in fits and starts, Subiaco. They've, uh, as I said, they've got a few players down. There it is. Dean, intelligent play because he couldn't kick it himself. A good backup from the vice captain. And boy, would he love to play in a winning grand final after playing 181 games and many losing Subiaco games. 81 to 78. Three points the difference, Bob. 26 minutes, 10 seconds gone in this third quarter. Scott playing the game of his life and also battling with Harding in the centre. Players trying to break through. Featherby gets it down towards the half forward line. It's getting pretty dark out there. Mainwaring's missed it. In comes Stephen Green, picked up by Christie. He boots it back to the centre. It's taken by Clinton Brown. This fellow could be gaining confidence as the game goes on. He's on the right centre wing. Kicks it long to centre half forward, looking for the tall timber. Keane's in there, Mainwaring takes it away. Hasn't done enough to mind Keane as Scott goes back to Mark. Can't. Comes out to Brown once again. Brown can run it into the forward line. Shocking oh. old kick straight into the arms of Mainwaring. Mainwaring returns a compliment but gives it to his own teammate. Mario Turco. His kick's not good. Zanotti dropped what he should have held. He's caught. Lucky to get away with it. Got the hand pass off. Let's see if Brown can do something better this time. Long kick from Brown. Keane goes high. Can't mark. Stop boxing for the kick, son. It's a grand final. Get up and play the game. As East Fremantle bring the ball out through Harding. Harding a long kick. Browning almost. Fights well. Gets out of trouble. 50 metres out. Clinton Browning a high kick. Back goes Roger Kerr and Taylor. Still in play. Taylor's kept it in play, so too has Roger Kerr, but finally it's going to be thrown in in East Randall's left full court pocket. Yes, great effort again by Browning, couldn't mark it, but pushed it on. It's in the blue and white territory, they lead by three points. Scott comes it out of play. Well, Scott, apart from a short uh, burst that Keane had on the ball, has been on the ball most of the day. Lockyer coming in now to compete against Scott. Scott getting the tap again, but his rovers are not taking the ball away. Consequently making the work for Phil Scott very hard indeed. Peastry Mantle have won 25 premiership, Subiac 05. Who's going to win this one? Scott again, gets it out to Warner. Away go the Lions. Oh, look at the mistakes. Another one from Taylor. Neil. The skipper boots it down towards 4-4, looking for Keane. Keane can't get it, he's not taking enough marks down there as Waterson brings it away. Waterson uh, playing a great game as the siren goes to end three-quarter time. Three points the difference, East from Adel, 12-9-81, Subi 11-12, 78.
final quarter, the 1985 Grand Final, the culmination of 12 months' work, three points of difference. Who's going to be the premiers? A bounce down in the centre, O'Loughlin. Harding, who's played well, boots it to half forward. This first 10 minutes is going to be crucial. The kick's going to Subiaco in the fence. The rain coming down at the moment. Subiaco kicking with the breeze, but of course, uh, that's going to nullify that to a certain extent. To nothing. Come up towards the centre. Hasn't got many leads. Harding's in there again. Off the ground by Renstead. To Jones. Pretty hard to get a kick to Featherby. Oh, straight up in the air from Featherby off the side of his boot. McNish is in there, surrounded by two players. Out comes Mainwaring. Uh, yes, holding the ball. And Dwayne Lamb will take the kick. Dwayne Lamb is forward of left centre wing. He's put the ball high, looking for Dean. Foreman knocked it away. Spencer was lurking dangerously. A chance now for Lamb. He's caught, holding the ball. Good decision, right? Cut his head. Yeah, Rankin's kick. He's got Waterson available. They must have taken him away from Keane. Or is Keane having a run on the ball? Pick He's it up in the second. Centre-half forward. Centre-half forward is Wilkinson back off the right half-back flank. Keeps it in play. Zanotti goes over the top of Wilson. Thumps it along. I don't think that was too wise because Waterson was there. Yes, and he's kept well it in. The umpire was right there. Coming from behind. Oh, oh. Man again Browning. Well, he had the sit. He had he, the run. And he took the wet ball on his chest. Have a look at this. A great wet weather mark. He well is done. murdering Crutchfield. Absolutely giving him a hiding today. That's, that's his sixth mark and he's coming in for his 13th kick from full forward and he's kicked uh, four goals as well that effort. number five if he gets it there's the kick awkward looking sort of a thing but it's through the middle and is he pleased because his last two final round games haven't been the best in the back line but a very pleased Clinton Browning playing extra well at full forward and five goals to his credit 78 to 87 now there it is right behind it a wet ball, of course. Not a great trajectory, but a low trajectory goal. Doesn't matter how you get them. The opening two and a half minutes. 87 to 78 in favour of Subiaco. In favour of East Fremantle, I should say. Back in the centre. Ruckman gathering. Scott's still in there. So is Harding. Players dive on it. Featherby. Chance for Dean. Dwayne Lamb forces it forward and tries to, but smothered. A Rockland. Out to Brian Taylor. The lines go towards half forward. Not a good kick. The ball's out of bounds. Half forward kick. I think Crutchfield's been moved from full back. He's playing on the ball or centre half back. And Brown's gone back down to full back on Clinton Browning. Throw in. Keane with a prodigious stump into the open. Dean closing on it. It's going to be a left foot kick at goal from Warren Dean. It's coming back. Sell's got a couple of beat. Oh, he's got Christie now. Better courage umpire. None available. It's a kick in a play. Brilliant grab. Superb mark. Taken by McNish. Subiaco getting something going to Keane. Who's going to be awarded a mark. Or a kick. I think John. Free kick, yeah. Free kick. Well, the crowd seething about that non-decision with uh, Holt. Everybody reckoned, and myself included, that he could have well been holding the ball. Keane from 50 metres out, directly in front. Got over the kick a little bit. It's off to the side. Oh, no, it's not. Well, there was no reaction from the crowd, and I thought it had gone to one side, but it's a goal to Subiaco. And there was no reaction from his teammates either, so they weren't very comfortable. No. There he is. He's kicking against this cross breeze. He's set it out, brings it back. Now we're back to three points. 13-9 East Fremantle, 12-12 Subiaco, typical grand final in this WA centenary year, and what a great finale to it. Four and a half minute mark. Scott and Harding need a medal each, these two. Harding gets this one. O'Loughlin's in there. One of the shadows. Warner. And it comes to Rankin. 
Kerr. Little players behind Scott. Trying to get his left hand to it, could not. Harding chips in. Boots it long towards full forward, looking for Browning. Browns with him now, picked up by Lotka. He has a pot shot, and it goes through for a point. Well, this is some sort of grand final. First down at one end of the ground, then up to the other end. 84 plays, 88. East from Adler in front at the five and a half minute mark of the last quarter. Kick in by Brown, good one. Lamb underneath it, knocked away from him by Rankin. Pete quickly onto the foot and just out on the four. This is Bevan Warner to bring the ball back into play off the right half back flank. Oh there, he's put it up in the air. Probably the tallest man on the ground, Harding. It was probably meant for Scott, but there was no way the ball was going to reach him. I thought the ball was wet and heavy. It was Paul Harding's uh, sixth mark. He was coming in for his tenth kick. Paul Harding from 60 metres out. Long torpedo punt kick. Brown and Browning. Both Clintons. And it's been forced through for a behind, or no, to be thrown in. Thrown in with the score 13 10 88 to 12 12 84. East to battle, four points in front. Wilkinson trying to get it out of there. Taylor is as well. The hand pass came out to Warner, but East to battle not letting them get away that easily. Thrown about 35 metres around. And the blue and white goals. Browning's in there, trying to bat his way through. Featherby there too. I bet they'd love to stay on the ground because it's been a tough game. Seven-minute mark coming up. There's four points of difference. And there's the East Fremantle bench. Ron Alexander has been off the ground for about three and a half quarters. Wondering if his side can do it without him. Neesham, Featherby with him. Two of the most experienced players on the ground there. Scott. Oh, Scott has kicked it out of bounds on the full. That's yeah. almost out into the street, that one. He's kicked it that far. You cannot afford mistakes at this stage. Because Wilson's got it, and he's a pretty good kick. He's about 60 metres out. Kicking towards the Perth end. The rain has eased at the moment. That's the way to kick it. Right in towards the square, looking for Browning. Crutchfield, what's he going to do with it? Sol and a chance. And he's put it through for a point. Gee, it's nice and tight, isn't it? 89 at 13, 11, 89 to 12, 12, 84. Desperate defence by Subiaco. And equally determined forward play by East from Adam. So Clinton Brown to bring the ball back into play for the Sharks. Long kick, Harding goes up. Scott knocks it down. Through they come. This is Lamb. Still Lamb with the opportunity. Jones goes in, gets the hand pass. Roger Kerr, Taylor caught high to Scott. Got a high kick. Bryce Foreman at the back. Not paid the mark. Dean can have a bit of a run. He'll still go, Warren Dean. Puts it up high towards Dean. Oh, oh, Dean must get a kick. Oh, the umpire didn't see it. Oh, he was dragged to the ground then, Dean. Oh, that's unfair. He was dragged to the ground by Waterson. Nice work if he can get away with it. And uh, not seen. Stephen Green. Short. That's the luck of the game. As Rankin puts the ball long, Brown's underneath it, thumps it to the ground. Chance for Scott. Courage to go through Renstead. Dwayne Lamb. Off to Zanotti. Zanotti a high kick. Spencer getting underneath it. Can't mark. Harding off the ground. Dwayne Lamb again. No one to give the hand pass to, so he does it well by himself. No, he doesn't. Chance for O'Loughlin. The feather be quickly on. Oh, you've got to work to get your kicks here. An interference to East from Adel, and I reckon Christie got himself underneath Sells' arm to take that. Well, mistakes by both sides, and possibly the umpires, a typical grand final. George Christie's got it. There is five points of difference. About the ten-minute mark in this final quarter. There's the dashing Wilson. Looking for Pete to come up. Nobody can pick it up cleanly. Through comes Warner. Playing close to the boundary line, just gets his foot to it. Play on. Dean stopped in the throw in, right in front of our commentary position at a Pat Subiak Oval in a 40,000 plus crowd yelling themselves hoarse. 
you know what they're booing for it's that uh, Keane incident and that will be the talking point of this grand final for some time Scott to Spencer and Spencer's getting this one five points down the lines and they roar back ah that's a good timely mark to Glenn Holt yeah, Glenn Holt, last line of defence for East Fremantle. He's got the ball at half back. Nisham's available. There's the kick. And Nisham unperturbed by the closing of Moore. Beautiful pass to Waterson. Well, he's a long way up the ground. Waterson right puts it into the forward line. Curve, but knocked away from him by Taylor. Here comes Zanotti. This is O'Loughlin. Been a little quiet today. O'Loughlin's kick to Scott. Scott left puts the ball into the forward line. Only as far as Holt breaks the tackle superbly. He's still got the ball to Solon, who's been a quiet player. Solon to Jones. Jones a long kick into the forward line. Oh, Mark dropped by Crutchfield. Renstead the chance. This is Roger Kerr into the path of Lockyer. Look at the pressure. Crutchfield battling. Nice sort of pressure, as Bob Miller called it. Finally, a long hand pass comes from Dwayne Lamb to Neil Taylor. Taylor not out of trouble. Back to Lamb, and Lamb gets Subiaco into attack, but only temporarily. Not a good kick, and it's marked by Chris Mainwaring when he feels his first grand final because it's tense out there. The boy from Gerald is steadying things up. He's gone long towards centre half forward. Over the back of the pack. Which way will it bounce? Out comes Browning. In goes Renstead. Murray Renstead running in what could be a vital kick has kicked a goal for the Sharks and well done. That's class football from Renstead. His but third goal and that's the sort of stuff that won him the Sandover medal. Absolutely brilliant play from Renstead. No thought about who was coming, what was there. The ball and the goals were all that mattered and a thoroughly deserved 14th goal to the Sharks. He'd be one of the biggest kick getters on the ground. That was his 13th kick and he's had 12 effective hand passes. Good stats. It's 14 11 95 to 12 12 84. And it will be a. Let's go the other way. The other way, okay. We can ill afford that, Suvi. What a time to have too many in the square. 95 to 84. Harding. To take it out of the middle. Big kick. The half forward. Browning in front. Brown behind. A little hesitant the Subiaco defence at the moment. And that will be a kick to Brian Taylor, number four. Taylor, not a lot on offer. Runs it out. Now kicks. Zanotti, Featherby at the back. High kick from Featherby, sells the target. Knocked away by Christie. Nisham overruns. This allows O'Loughlin in to Keane. Keane makes some meterage. He's caught. Breaks the tackle, the kick is smothered. Brilliant defensive play as they gang up on Keane now. Jones clears, knocked on by Roger Kerr. Peak has the ball, carried forward and will take a kick. What a mistake sprinting into Subiaco's play. Yes, a mistake, one end of the ground, now it's down the other end. And Brian Peak from just on the point of the square, about 65 metres out. And there's the Sandover medalist. Came back at the right time. 278 games to his credit. He kicks towards full oh, oh, Tremendous mark by Clinton Browning. What could be the mark of the match and what possibly could seal the premiership for the Blue and Whites? Well, if he's been disappointed with his previous final round games, he's got no reason to be disappointed today. That was superb. The man has kicked five goals in a very difficult game and is coming in from point blank range for number six. That's his seventh mark and he's coming in for his 14th kick. Kicking from the 25 metre mark. We're only about 15 minutes in, but this is a vital kick. All eyes on him. Clinton Browning kicks truly and East Fremantle go further ahead. Well, this makes it difficult for Subiaco now at the 15 minute mark of this final quarter. East Fremantle have moved to 15-11-101 and Subiaco are 12-12-84. Wilkinson is off the ground and Sparks has come on. And the sun is out, albeit for East Fremantle, not shining too much for Subi at the moment. But they're a side of character and they're by no means out of the 1985 grand final yet. The Harding and Scott 
This is Neesham. Hand pass to Jones, who's got plenty of room to move. Jones runs the ball into the forward line. Lead is on from Renstead. Mark is taken. Karen Whites are getting the ball out of the centre. They're steadying and pinpointing the ball. Here's one of the best players on the ground, the Sandover medalist, Murray Renstead. Look at the way he leads. Takes it on the chest perfectly. Coming in for his 14th kick. Renstead from 50 metres out. Starts it out right. Unfortunately for him, it stays right. It's out of bounds. Didn't know that whether it crossed the line or not from here, but it has. And so it'll be thrown in East Fremantle's right full forward pocket. They lead at the 16 minute mark. 101 to 84. They've got a chance again. As uh, Brown soccers it away in defence. Gathered nicely by Wilson. Just about disappears. Oh, look at him selling everything. There he goes for a shot at full forward. Oh, it hasn't got the distance. Roger Kerr shoots. Oh. And Neil Taylor says, thank you for that one. Neil Taylor relieves the pressure. Brings it out towards the flank. The game's not over yet. Dwayne Lamb's got a good mark. Had a tremendous season, this fellow. Looking for Sells. Finds him. With Subiaco. Making a determined effort to come back. Stephen Green. From the back, it's Larry Keane. And the ball's gone out of play. Listen to the crowd. 101 to 84, we're about 17 minutes in, about 13 minutes to go, left of the 1985 season. And Lachlan's batting, Philip Lamb, turns for Spencer, what can he do, gets his foot to it quickly, and unfortunately he has kicked it out of play. Well the East Fremantle defence playing as well at the moment as the forward line is, and it'll be Waterson to bring the ball up the uh, left half back flank. He's got Stephen Green available, and that's the way the kick goes. One of the players that played in the 1979 Premiership side. There's only three of them. Green going short to Christie. He's got Wilson and Main wearing if he wants them. Short passing game, Wilson. Uh, just walks around a couple, gets the hand pass back. They have overdone it, although Main wearing recovers to soccer it off the ground. Warner kicks for the boundary line. Close to the boundary line. Oh. About one metre inside, one inch inside. So it's 15-11-101 to East Fremantle. 12-12-84 Subiaco. That at the 17 and a half minute mark. Scott. Lamb tries to come through. Better be pushed. Will take the kick. Well, the Evergreen still going strong. He's Played, set. of course, in the 1973. That's his 17th kick. Premiership side. Keen this time, yes! And he brings Subiaco back into it. A kick from just about the 50 metre line. The breeze not a great factor at the moment. And he's kicked some long kicks today, this fellow. There it is. That's Lawrence Keane, can you make a name for yourself? Listen to the crowd. Sets it out. Won't make the distance. Dean's got it, but he takes it from behind offhand, so it must be a bounce ball. Good decision. Right in the square, the bounce. Harding's up there. Can the Lions score and come back into it? Keen trying to get it down. Spencer picked up by Harding. It's good play to Foreman. Foreman does a little chip shot to Rankin. This is great defensive play by East Fremantle as Rankin puts some distance into the ball. Across comes Sparks. Gets around Peak. Oh, it's a dangerous hand pass, but it'll be OK to Scott to Warner. Warner, no, not good enough. Knock it off the ground. Featherby. Oh, Tanner. Wilson gave him a whack. Now, the umpire called a play on then, but then decided he'd bring it back, and Peter Featherby groggily gets to his feet. There it is. Thump. No doubt about it. And Wilson saying, who, me? <laughs> Not asked. Featherby, a high kick. Keen the target. Can't mark. Green, caught. Waterson, oh, Keane went in and gave him one. A bit of a payback, I'd suggest. And Waterson to take the kick in a 15-metre penalty. And really, when the ball's in their forward line, they shouldn't do those sorts of things. This should be Waterson's 17th kick. He played a great game of defence at the 19-minute mark, and there's a 60-metre kick right down towards the end of the square. Brian Taylor around the neck. Got to take the kick. Brian Taylor trying to put the Lions into attack. 
He's gone short into the centre. That's not a good kick. Pete comes in, backed up by Sparks. Now Wilson's got it. Now Kerr. Now Neesham. Neesham buttoning his way through, and the kick is going which way? It's going to Subiaco, and it's going to O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin just fought of set a half back. Looks for Featherby. Oh, he's a bit too groggy to take that. A bit old as uh, Renstead emerges and just pops it onto the chest of Lockyer. And all the experience of East Fremantle Stadium to come to the fore at the 20-minute mark. Yes, they're using it at the right time. This fellow only played one game uh, last year, but what a star he's been this year. 15-11-101-12-12-84. Coming in for his ninth kick. 45 metres out, Lockyer. It's a kick is just a little offline. So Subiaco's hopes are still alive. We're at the uh, 21 and a bit minute mark and it's 15-12-102 to 12-12-84. Three goal margin to the Sharks. So Lachlan has got the ball on the defensive 50 metre line. They've got to go along the lines. They come towards the centre. Neil Taylor, oh, dropped his head and missed it. Into the centre. Peter Featherby battling must be very tired and a bounce down on the point of the square. So he might also be a bit groggy from... Uh, that incident a few minutes ago, Bob. Yes, there's a few players tied out there, but they're still fighting on on both sides, which is a tribute to their physical fitness. Wilson's one of them, and so is this fellow Renstead. Dwayne Lamb gets it out to Featherby again. Oh. Dwayne Lamb plays on, with him is Renstead. And look at the courage of Lamb. And this fellow, Renstead. Back it comes to Billy Jones. Players throwing themselves in. And the kick's going away of the blue and white. Well, I couldn't agree with that. But it's going to be a kick to Harding. They've been doing that for some time, then out of the blue they pull one out. As Harding gets a beautiful long kick to half forward. Warner goes back, can't mark. Chance for Lamb, pushes it forward. Taylor is there as well, number four. This is Mario Turco, he's caught by Dwayne Lamb. Renstead waited back, this allowed Crutchfield to come through. Long kick into the forward line. Keane in front, can't mark gathers nicely, is caught and pass straight to Stephen Green East Fremantle bring it away with consummate ease as Harding gets a long one to Christie in the middle of the ground Christie to half forward race on here, Rankin's got plenty of pace, closing now is O'Loughlin, Lamb over the top, got him but there's too many East Fremantle players as Solon centres the ball towards Browning and Brown Browning bursts his way through, still with it, tried to get rid of it, so not penalised. This is Crutchfield, looking for O'Loughlin, O'Loughlin traps, little hand pass to himself, now got it on to Featherby, Featherby allowed to play on, into the forward line it goes, short kick, chance for Spencer, no backup, gets the hand pass away, Mort comes through, left the ball behind but Nisham didn't. Uh, the experience coming in us goes to Billy Jones from the General Nisham. And he's done it all day to lock you all on his own out on the far flank. The blue and white's doing it well towards Browning, but this ball's gone out of play. We're coming up to the time on period. It's 102 to 84 in favour of the blue and white Sharks, and they've been on top of the list all the year and look like taking out this 1985 Premiership. There it is, Scott getting it down. Warner. Still fighting on to Scott again. Rucked all day. Gets it up to the centre. There he is again. Jared Neesham. Well, lucky they recruited this fellow this year. Yeah, they, they did well out of that, didn't they? They certainly did. There he is. Played a tremendous year. 171 games he's played of league football with three clubs. Been an ornament to the game. Harding. Jones, and once more the ball's gone out of play, and we're into the time on period of the 1985 grand final. Time running out for Subiaco, but their score is such that they can still get into this game well and truly, as Taylor fires the ball off. Long kick into the forward line, one-hander, a beauty! Great mark taken by McNish. McNish decides to chip it up short and gives it to Taylor. Taylor in an oh, he played on, he'd want to get this. Gets the hand pass away to Brian Taylor. Left foot shot at goal is okay. Oh, 
Yep. They could stop that. The Lions have started to roar again, and can they roar back into it? Just over the 25-minute mark, and the difference is 102 to 90. Two straight kicks, 12 points of difference. What a finish to the season. There's a left foot shot from Taylor. Started off in the back pocket. There he is, the skipper. Didn't know what to do. Fortunately, gave it to his brother and said, you kick it. Yeah, I don't want the responsibility. <laughs> oh, that's a bad bounce at this stage of the game. Taken by Rankin. He can't get it. Warner's there. Now it's Sparks. Good back up from O'Loughlin. And what's happened? The free kick's going back. Yes, taken by Sparks. 12 points of difference. I'd say about four minutes to go. How good is Subiaco? Scott! Right centre wing, Philip Scott, one of the most improved ruckmen in the game. Scott sends the ball up high. Mark to Dean, no. Keane gets in there, wrench there, just takes it off him though, and clears out to the vacant right wing. Roberts should get there first. He gets around Kerr, fires it long into the forward line. Wayne Lamb over the top, Stephen Green with him. Oh, there's two of them on him, but it's got it down to Taylor. Taylor, a left foot kick into the forward line. Down it comes, sells into the open, gets around a couple, bursts in, point blank range, shoots, missed, missed. Oh, he can't believe it. Oh, oh dear. He was the only left footer in the forward line. He was on his wrong foot, could not get around, and from 15 metres out, he has missed. 11 points of difference. As we said, talk about shades of the second semi-final, Bob. What a finale, the crowd loving every moment, and what a great finish to the season as Watterson brings it out. The game's not over yet. Here's Neeson trying to lift his tired legs. With him is his shadow, Lachlan, but Neeson does it well. Puts it down to Billy Jones. Jones to half forward, looking for Lockyer. Zanotti in front. Through comes Roberts. Philip Lamb to, uh, into the centre to Crutchfield. Crutchfield boots a long one towards the forward area. 10 for Mort. And Mort is 55 metres out. Time ticking away. 28 minutes gone. What a tremendous game. Michael Mort. Oh, he's kicked it high in the air. The big crowd fly. Nobody can bring it down. Harding gets it out. It's into the square. Picked up the reliable Waterson. Chance for Sells. He's got no backup. Into the pocket it goes. There's the snapshot. Into the square and it's taken by Scott. Now Scott is about 12 metres out and Subiaco are 11 points down and we're oh. at the 30-minute mark. And Wilson remonstrating with the umpire because he said he was being held away from the ball. Well, if Scott can kick this, Subiaco will be five points down. The lot relies on this kick from Phil Scott. He's put it through, the game's alive. Well, what a turnabout, just when we thought that East from Amber were in front and cruising. I think the siren's, siren's gone. gone. I think the siren is gone. Uh, I think the siren's gone, it has. That's uh, the final score of the match. And East from Amber have won the 1985 Grand Final. Five points. Final score, 15-12-102 to 14-13-97 by a margin of five points. Well, what a dramatic finish, John. You couldn't have any better. A goal kicked seconds before the siren. Subiaco made a few mistakes at the wrong time, but full marks to the Blue and Whites. They played it well, recovered from a bad start, came right back into it. Look at Ron Alexander. Congratulations to the big captain coach. Played over 300 games and led his blue and whites to victory. And are they happy? And well, they should be. And well, they should be, Bob, because... Um, There's Harry Morgan. As we said, they've been the trendsetters in Western Australian football all year. Well, listen to the crowd. Well, I think there was blues by umpires on both sides in that last quarter. Yep. And the uh, crowd giving the umpires a serve, but it doesn't matter. The thrill of the day is the fact that East Fremantle have won. Well, there it is, John. Every picture tells a story. The 1985 Centenary Grand Final, the Subiaco players so near yet so far. The what-ifs, Bob. What yes. if that shot of Sells had have been through? 
what a tremendous finish though. A great finale to the 1985 uh, season. You couldn't have wished for anything better. One kick in it with seconds to go. Yes, East from Adelaide have won by five points. The score's 15-12 to 14-13. 102 to 97. And a dejected Subiaco side they can the ground, unfortunately. They can feel proud of themselves as they go off. They certainly can. They can't believe the fact they've lost the game, but they have, unfortunately, for them. But the crowd rising as one and giving them a standing ovation, which there's, they richly deserve. There's the big shark, captain coach Ron Alexander. And boy, is he elated. And as we said, well, he should be. Yes, indeed. As we said earlier, the trendsetters for football for 1985. Yeah. The favourites to win the flag, and they confirm their favouritism and confirm their dominance of this competition. The presentation is being made down on the ground. Let's go down there now. as I'm sure every Eastry man of supporter is. I congratulate the Subiaco players and the Subiaco football team and club. They certainly put up a magnificent exhibition and we really didn't get anything easy. Certainly a moment that every footballer dreams of. I'm absolutely proud of all the East Remantle players, all 28, 30 that were in the squad. I think they're a magnificent bunch of people, just as the East Remantle Club is a magnificent club. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, time to present the gold medallions to the winning Premiership side for season 1985. 
to make those presentations, the chairman of the Wasps Australian Football League, Mr Vince Jovic, and a man I know who'll be proud to call out each of his players to come and receive that medallion. Again, your captain coach, Ron Alexander. Our vice captain, Brian Peake. Deputy Vice Captain Clinton Browning. Jared Nation. presentation to be made this afternoon. I don't think anybody would decry the superb performance of the Subiaco Football Club, which you should acknowledge. Also gives me great pleasure the presentation to be made by the Chairman of the WAFL, Mr. Vincent Jovic, to announce the winner of the Simpson Medal, Subiaco's Brian Taylor. to each man for a great game but um, it's a great honour to receive this award but I would swap it for one of those ones any day. Thank you. Good on you Brian Taylor. I would think the Subiaco Football Club will get many more opportunities and now I invite Ron Alexander and his school of shark to celebrate with a lap of honour. Ladies and gentlemen, East Fremantle. Thank you. 
September here, East from Ant. 